In this video, we will study about gate control theory of pain. While the basic concept of pain has been explored by scientists since the 16th century, it was not until the 1960s that researchers made a major leap in understanding the complexities of pain. Put forth by scientists Ronald Melzack and Patrick Wall in 1965, the gate control theory of pain reasons that pain sensations are involved in an intricate series of communications between the central nervous system, which involves the brain and spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system, that is the nerve present elsewhere, that is in the torso and extremities. So according to the study performed by Ronald Melzack and Patrick Wall, so sitting between are a series of gates. These gates can either transmit pain signals or they can block pain signals. How patients experience pain depends on the interplay of the gates and these two systems. With either an injury or a chronic condition, pain messages originate in the nerves in and around the affected tissue, such as muscles and ligaments in the leg. This is just an example. So when there is a pain sensation perceived by the neurons present, suppose in the legs and ligaments, the, uh, the person gets hit by some nail or some other sharp object and, exp and experiences a pain. So these afferent nerve fibers, they travel. These impulses carried by the afferent nerve fibers travel along the peripheral nerves to the spinal cord and eventually to the brain and hence the body experiences pain. Gate control theory suggests that there are gates on the nerve fibers between the peripheral nerves and the brain and they help control how pain messages flow from the, flow from the peripheral nervous system to the CNS. So in this figure you can see the pathway of pain through the body. In figure, in the um, point denoted by 1, you can see, uh, suppose the patient gets hit on the toe uh, from some object, the pain reaches the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. So, in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord, this is a zoom out picture of the uh, dorsal horn of the uh, spinal cord here you can see the pain signal enters the dorsal horn then it exits through the ventral horn so this is the dorsal horn and this is the ventral horn of the spinal cord and this is the cut section of spinal cord so once the pain exits the ventral horn it again reaches the uh, spinal cord to the thalamus and from the thalamus, the pain is further carried to the cerebral cortex, where the pain is perceived. Coming to types of sensory nerve fibers, we have two types of sensory nerve fibers. They are pain fibers and sensory and proprioceptive fibers. The pain fibers are also known as nociceptive fibers. Pain fibers are of two types. They are A delta fibers and C fibers. The A delta fibers are large and slightly myelinated nerve fibers. And they carry sensation fast. Whereas C fibers, they are small and non-myelinated and they carry sensation rather slowly. So the myelin sheet that covers the nerve fiber actually helps in fast movement of the impulse. The sensory and proprioceptive receptors 
or the proprioceptive nerve fibers are a alpha and a beta nerve fibers and both of them are large myelinated and they are fastest amongst all kinds of nerve fibers they carry mainly non painful stimuli under normal function these pain signals travel freely along the fast a delta fibers that senses sharp pain and slow c fibers that sense dull pain through the open gates the signals then pass through structures called projection neurons moving quickly on to the spinal cord and ultimately the brain so this is a condition a scenario which shows a normal case where the pain uh, where the pain signals are traveling freely through the um, pain nerve fibers the the, uh, the impulse then travels through the open gates passes through the projection neuron then ultimately passes to the brain now let's see a scenario where if one hyper stimulates the a beta fibers that is the uh, nerve fibers that carry touch sensation remember a beta fibers don't carry a uh, pain sensation rather they are proprioceptive receptors so if we imagine a situation if one hyper stimulates the a beta fibers in the area experiencing pain so what it can lead to it can cause a reaction from nearby structures called inhibitory neurons so once activated the inhibitory neurons which sit on the same path as the projection neurons they can mute pain signals before they reach the spinal cord and brain this effectively puts a damper on the pain so in the figure we see the patient is having pain on the shoulder now the small nerve fibers or the nociceptive receptors they are carrying pain sensation through a delta and c fibers and the large nerve fiber that is the a beta nerve fibers it is carrying touch sensation now the small nerve fibers they enter the projection neuron and they stimulate the substantia gelatinosa over there which leads to production of painful stimuli but if at the same time the a beta fibers or the or the large nerve fibers are also stimulated then what happens the inhibitory neurons which are present in between the projection neuron and the efferent and the uh, afferent neuron they get activated and they block the projection neuronal pathway so hence pain is not received so this was a simplified explanation of the gate control theory and the diagram presented here is very important so i hope this video was helpful thank you